Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and this time we're going to talk about a super easy method for giving surfaces a rusty appearance in Dreams for PS4, so let's get to it. You can do this with any surface, so I'll use a pretty simple one to show you a couple of different concepts. The first thing you're going to do is pick a base color. This is the color of the object under all the wear and grime. This technique isn't uh, exclusive for rust. You can use the general concepts for wear of all sorts, but I use this a lot on old metal, so I'll pick a steely gray to start. I will quickly lay the shape down. Like I said, it's simple and I'll make some raised areas so we have some edges and depth to work with. With the difference in depth, I think that it's good to accentuate that with color. So on these raised surfaces, I'm going to say those were painted at one point. I'm going to put that color down first so that we're subtracting from it with our later application of rust. I will pick a nice industrial looking light blue green and I'm going to apply that with a rotating half sphere. Obviously different shapes give different results when spray painting. Through trial and error, I've settled on mostly using rotating half spheres, rotating hexagonal cylinders, and plain spheres for spray paint. When we are doing this, we have two considerations. The first is that whatever we do doesn't need to be perfect. This is supposed to be a worn, jacked up surface. You want there to be spots you've missed. The second consideration is shared memory cost. When you're spray painting, you're creating one edit per frame, and with spray paint, that cost applies to shared memory, not sculpture data like shape edits. At 30 edits per frame, those can add up very quickly and sneak up on you until your shared memory cost of a sculpt is more than the sculpture data cost. So we want to put the paint down as quickly as possible with as few sweeps as possible. And it doesn't need to be perfect because we want miss spots and we're also going to neaten up the edges with our rust colors. With the rust colors you can get super fancy and make your own but in my experience the random orange mixer works great for this purpose. For rust a good look is sharp flaky looking transition so I like to use an elongated rotating hexagonal cylinder. You can pick any size you like. It helps doing this technique several times to give you a feel for what sizes work. I'm using some transparency with this color to blend in with the green just a little, but this technique works fine with opacity turned all the way up if you want to do it that way. I will spray that all over and I'm not being careful with the green. One thing I do want to do is make sure I'm getting the green covered up in areas where I don't want it. By the way, just to note, I'm doing all this with surface snap on. In places where I want a little more control, I'll shrink the spray head down and go over it again a little more deliberately. And then very fast sweeps over the edges on the sides to isolate the green a little more. When we check out the thermal, we want to go into more details so we can see the graphics breakdown. And shared memory is at 1%, so we're in good shape for the moment, but you want to keep an eye on that. And this will vary based on what your target cost is for the sculpt. So if you've set aside 4% for the cost, you're going to have 4% in both sculpture data and shared memory to work with. Personally, I'm aiming for 1% on most sculpts these days. Next, I'm going to apply some looseness. Same philosophy, I don't want this to be too uniform if I can avoid it. And like spray paint, this will apply to shared memory at one edit per frame if you hold the button down while applying it. I've edited the tool and uh, turned looseness most of the way up and turned blend up some so I can get varying results from overlaps. Where I can, I'll apply that uh, one button press at a time to keep shared memory cost down and also to give me more control of the effect of overlapping edits in order to try to retain sharp edges on the shape. And I'll continue doing that until I have the entire surface covered. While you want to keep your edges sharp to retain integrity of the shape, you also don't want the transitions between looseness and tightness to be too obvious. 
so you may want to go back in and do some detail work close to your edges. When you do this, turn blend all the way down on the tool in order to be able to get as close as possible to those edges without loosening them. Let's take another quick look at the thermo. Shared memory is still 1%, but you can see it has moved above sculpture physical shape in cost, so it is increasing. Sculpture data is at 4%, and we want to get that down to 1%, so we will be working with the Sculpture Detail tool. Nothing fancy happening here, I'm just reducing with the Sculpture Detail tool until I get our overall graphics thermo down to 1%. That's a pretty good base result. Now I'll go into the Sculptures Tweak menu to adjust the overall look of things. Keep in mind there is no thermal cost involved when changing things in the Tweak menu. In Outer Properties, I'm going to add some color to mute our color transitions a little. With Rust, you can do this with a couple of different colors. I'm using a blue, which is orange's complement, and that will bring my oranges toward inter intermediate neutrals. You can also use an orangish color, and that will accentuate your oranges while turning your bluish paint colors toward neutral. I'll apply some materials properties, making this fully metal and mostly rough. The combination of those two will darken the sculpture significantly, and you can compensate by adjusting the outer properties color if need be. A key ingredient to this look is the inner properties color. We are going to set that to about the color of our original base color and set the slider fairly high. This will give us a flaky rust look as the inner color and the color of the flex differentiate. It is important to note that this effect is only apparent close up, especially in VR, and this makes liberal use of looseness vital to pulling it off. The looser you can get parts of the sculpt while maintaining its integrity, the farther back this look will be visible. Now we're going to accentuate the edges and lines with some spray paint for a bolder look and also to increase visibility of those edges at a distance. To make it easier to keep track of what I'm doing, I've temporarily removed most of the tweak menu effects I applied earlier. The general objective here is to make it look like grease, grime, mold, or whatever has gathered in these cracks, so I'm going to pick some dark colors. I would avoid pure black because once you've put that in your scene, your scene can never go darker. And if you use dark colors as a substitute for pure black consistently, those will, will appear relatively dark and give your scene more color. As a result, I'm putting the darkest gray and a very dark blue and yellow green into the mixer. No blend on my brush and opacity is about 75%. I'm using a pretty small sphere for the brush head, just large enough to color, cover the edge well. I will then move across the edge as quickly as possible, again keeping shared memory in mind so we avoid bumping that up to 2% if we can. You can get artistic with this and stray from the edges a little. I would avoid doing this too much as the spray paint patterns become easy to distinguish at a distance. I'll finish that up real quick and we'll take another look at the thermo to make sure we don't need to walk any of that back. This is the great part about being aware of shared memory cost. If you know where you're at, you can spray some, check, and undo if need be. Conversely, if you're just spraying away for minutes at a time, it can really add up, and when you're done, you'll only be able to undo a small portion uh, left with either a needlessly expensive sculpt or doing it all over from scratch. Just a brief word about lighting. When you light anything, be aware of the colors involved. Know the color scheme you're trying to achieve and know your complements. In this sculpt, we have mostly green, blue, and orange. We can apply various colors in the form of light to these surfaces to either accentuate the surface colors or mute them by converting them into neutrals. Also be aware, neutrals are interesting to look at and help make the more saturated colors in your scene pop. So in this video, we looked at how to easily apply wear and rust to surfaces and also tacked on some color tips. 
The last few days I've been working on my latest collection and we'll get back to VR soon as I start sculpting some lighting fixtures for that, so stay tuned. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you in the Dreamiverse.